For first questions? Yeah, it's going to be phenomenal. You know, we've come a long way. Obviously, like you said, when I was starting off my senior international career, it was probably just friends and family and a couple of hundred in the stand. But we've grown so much from those days. And now as we're walking out, finally in the Aviva, having a women's football match there for the national team with hopefully a really big crowd, it's going to be something really, really special for us all. Uh, fresh start this week, just ahead of the new season, new coaching staff. What are the kind of differences you've noticed from the off? I think just straight away, the level of professionalism. You know, obviously there's been three new roles introduced into the squad, which we haven't had before. So I think that's a massive sign of intent from the association that, OK, we want to raise the level like it's been here, but we want to raise it up there. and. I think just to raise the standard across the, the whole team, staff, players, on and off the field, um, I think it's it's going to be massive and it's going to be really exciting to be a part of. You've been used to Emma Byrne shouting at you from <laughs> standing in goal, now she's probably going to be shouting at you from the side. Yeah. What's it like to have her back involved? Yeah, it's great to have her back involved. You know, Emma, I've obviously played with her for many years, um, played in front of her, so she's going to bring obviously a wealth of experience, a big personality and just to be able to share her knowledge and experiences with, with the likes of myself, but also the younger girls coming through, it's going to be uh, really valuable. Lastly then, how helpful is it that so many girls know Amy Gleason so well and she's come in to, to take charge for the next couple of weeks? Yeah, it gives us a little bit of stability in this kind of you know, unstable period of transition, but uh, obviously we've worked with Eileen for, for many years as an assistant under Vera, and. She was with us out in Australia for the World Cup, so uh, yeah, she, she brings her own strengths and nice energy and calmness about the way she, she leads and coaches us, so it's going to be an um, interesting camp with her. Thanks, Cheers. Diane, you mentioned that first international at the Aviva. Do you what's the significance of that? I think it's just massive for the, the game in Ireland, you know, to show that, okay, we're filling out Tala Stadium, and now we're ready for the next step to go into the Aviva, the National Football Stadium of Ireland, and hopefully have a really good crowd. Like I think it's 30,000 tickets have been sold so far, which is a massive number, and uh, hopefully that will continue to grow in the next few days. But it's just massive. It's just massive to show the, the progress that women's football has made um, domestically, but internationally as well, on the back of a fantastic World Cup tournament. Just on the tournament, haven't had a few weeks to reflect on how it went. For yourself, what do you feel the squad needs to do now to, to kick on? I think we just need to raise our standards in all levels of performance, on and off the pitch, expectations of ourselves, um, expectations of staff, um, increase the level of professionalism across the board in every, in every facet, be it um, match analysis, opponent analysis performance related nutrition recovery every, everything across the board and obviously um, just get the best out of us as players as a group on the pitch you mentioned that level of professionalism a couple of times do you feel that was lacking uh, under I think there are many areas that could have been better yes under her tenure it's the same performance factors that I just mentioned. I think our preparation for games could have been better. Um, physical preparation, uh, opponent analysis, um, match tactics, um, in-game match tactics, changes, uh, systems of play. Um, yeah. That doesn't mean a lot. Uh, what was happening for you under Vera? What was happening under Vera? Um, I think a group of players that were destined for success came together at the right time. But what you outlined in terms of what was lacking, what, what was her approach, what was, what was her take on, on analysing opponents and, and prepping for them? Well, you'd have to ask her that, but from my position as a pretty experienced player I don't think it was up to the standard of expected at an international level 
and I think the results and performances that we got were in spite of Vera being our coach. Okay. Diane, were you ever able to talk to Vera about that? Was she approachable in those ways if you, if you wanted to make a suggestion? Yeah, we approached her many times um, about professionalising many aspects. Um, but it was, it was hard to get change. And, you know, she obviously made myself a part of the leadership group that she created, along with a few other players. So she gave us that position to use our voice and, and to try to uh, talk on behalf of the team. And I think we tried to do that as a group the best that we could. But obviously, at the end of the day, she is the coach and she controls everything. And you only can say and try to change so much. Yeah, I was sort of asking Katie there. It was stated that she lost the dressing room, really. Um, why do you think that was? Maybe those examples that you gave that maybe not to, maybe their voices weren't heard at times? Yeah, um, again, I think it was just uh, an accumulation of everything. And over a long time, you know, after the European campaign, myself and Katie also reflected um, through doctor at the time about certain aspects of things that need to be improved and changed. Um, but ultimately that fell on deaf ears and she got a contract extension. Is it safe to say you're happy that there's change? Yeah, I'm very happy that there's change. Um, it gives us all kind of a new lease of life and there's a new beginning. And like I said, with the, the changes that the FAI has made with the new roles, it just shows intent standards are going to be raised. Uh, they've, they've listened to the stakeholders involved in this team and realised that these girls are good, but we actually can be even getting more out of them. And we, they can even be performing at a higher level and achieving more success than, than what they have been. It, it, it brings a kind of um, its own pressure though, doesn't it, as well? Yeah. In, in the sense that you guys now kind of, um, whatever way you want to phrase it, like, happy with the change majority of you I'm guessing mm. that you guys have to kind of push on as you say to you know with a lot of public eyes to kind of justify it kind of go because they're kind of waiting to see okay what's next yeah but I think we're used to that as a group you know we put ourselves under tremendous scrutiny by threatening strike action and I think that was the most pressure we've ever felt as a group because it was us out on the pitch we had to go out there and back up what, everything we were asking for so I think it's a little bit like that, you know, and I think we've grown as well with that pressure since that period of time. And now we've backed it up at results. We've, we've shown that we can contest with the best and um, that gives you an inner belief and an ability to deal with those expectations and those pressures. And, and do you understand, I mean, I, I know some media is not a gauge, but like, um, various other media as well, there would have been a lot of consternation, confusion about the departure, not understanding everything that possibly people in the room might know here or wherever, mm -hmm. you guys. Like, do you kind of understand that or understand that kind of viewpoint because they're just seeing from the outside? Yeah, of course. Manager gets the World Cup, manager gone, they're going, what's, you know? Yeah, of course, people, people not in the know will find it hard to understand uh, and see it from our point of view, but... Um, you know, you know, knowledge is your wealth, you know, and uh, if you don't know these things, I think it's probably uh, wrong to speak out and to, to give your opinion on things that you maybe don't have a full understanding of. Just a final question for me, Diane. The whole Ruby Allen's affair, what was your take on that? It, it was a shocking drag on for, for as long as it did. Mm. Yeah, it was shocking, but it also shows how far we still have to go in women's sports, um, unfortunately. You know, we have made tremendous uh, development in the last couple of years in so many areas, but I think it just highlighted that there, there could be still those possibilities for those things, those moments to happen, unfortunately, and that we still need to be um, prepared to deal with those situations. And, uh, yeah, keep on our toes, learn from it, and um, move on. Were you surprised at the level of pushback that came from certain quarters and supporters? Uh, 
Um, no, I don't think I was because for something like that to happen on the global stage, cameras all around, broadcast, you know, World Cup final, every country, and to see something like that, I think people were just shocked. So I think the pushback was, was warranted and understood. Thank you. Yeah. And did you feel, Diane, that you had a big personal decision to make yourself over the last few weeks, or were you always going to go again in Ireland? Oh, no, I was never contemplating retirement. <laughs> no, not yet. No. Great. Okay, guys, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Thank guys. You. Thank you. See you all on Saturday then. Yeah, best of luck. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.